How's it going you guys? So for this video, we're going to go over the problem average of levels in a binary tree. So the description says given a non empty binary tree, return the average value of the nodes on each level in the form of an array. So this problem is going to involve a breadth first search. So let's jump over the whiteboard and I'll show you guys how to solve this. So we're going to be returning an array where the size of our array is going to be equal to the amount of levels that we have in our binary tree, right? Because each index is going to be an average. So if we look at the first level, the average is just the sum of that level divided by the number of nodes. So we have 10 is our sum divided by one because we only have one node, right? And so that would be 10. In our second level, we do five plus five is 10 divided by two, since we have two nodes, and that equals five. And then at our last level, we have two plus three plus four, so that's five, nine, divided by three, since we have three nodes, and so that means our average is three. So our resulting array should return 10, five, and three. And so like I said before, we're gonna do a breadth first search because we have to sum up all of the nodes at every level to actually compute this average. So to perform this breadth first search, we're going to be utilizing a queue, right? And we're also going to need to have a sum variable to keep track of uh, our count as we're going over each level. So we can have another variable and call it sum. And by default, this will just be zero. And so to start our BFS, we need to add in our root node. So our root node is 10. And so what that means is we are going to pull from our queue a single time. So we're going to take off our 10. And once we do that, we're going to add that number that we have just pulled to our sum. So our new sum is now 10. And we're going to add in the child nodes of our node that we just removed. So we're going to add the left child and right child, which is five and five. And we're finished for this level. So what that means is we need to divide our sum by the size of our queue at that time before we started pulling elements. So our size initially was one. So we would do 10 divided by one and so that means our resulting array would just have the number 10 inside of it. And then we pretty much just restart the process. So our sum goes back down to zero. And then our size is whatever the Q size is currently, which is two. We have two nodes, five and five. And so this size tells us how many times we need to pull from our Q, right? So we're going to pull the first number five. And we're going to add that number to our sum, which is five. And then we're going to do that once again. But first, we need to add in the left or right node uh, from the node we just pulled. So we're going to add in node two. And then we're going to pull again and add that number to our sum, which is 10 now, five plus five and add in the children of that uh, node, which is three and four. And since we finished polling two times, because our size was two, we need to do 10 divided by two, which is five, and then we restart. So our, uh, our sum goes back down to zero, and then our size is three now. We have a total of three nodes in our queue. And we're going to remove two. That gets added to our sum. We, uh, we don't have any children for this node, so we don't have to add anything back into the queue. We're going to remove three and add that to our sum, which is five. Once again, no nodes, uh, no children nodes to this parent. And we're going to pull one last time the four. And so five plus four is nine. And then we do nine divided by three, which is three. 
And that would be our final answer. So as you can see, it's not too complicated. You just have to know to keep track of a sum as you're going. And obviously knowing how to do a breadth first search is very important for this problem. So now let's jump over to the code and implement this. So we're gonna be returning a list of doubles, which are gonna be our averages. So let's create that. And this will be our result. And we need to handle the case just in case our root is null. So if our root is null, then we can just return an empty result. And then now we're just going to be performing the BFS. So we need to initialize a queue and it's going to be holding tree nodes. And inside of this queue, we are going to have our root node be added first. So let's add that in. And we can say while our queue is not empty, now we need to extract our size because this will tell us how many times we need to pull from our queue. So we can say tree, uh, int size equals queue dot size. And then we need to do a for loop up to size. And then in here, we're just going to be pulling from our queue that many times. So we can say tree node, node, and this is going to be equal to queue.pull. But keep in mind, we still need our sum variable to be initialized, right? So we're gonna initialize our sum out here, and we can just have it start at zero. And whenever we pull from our, our queue, we're gonna add that value to this sum. So we can say sum plus equals node.val. And then we need to add the left and right child to our queue if they're not null. So we can say if node.left is not equal to null, queue.add node.left. If node.right is not equal to null, queue.add node.right. And then by the very end, we should have all of the computed sum for that level. So we need to add in that result to our result array. So we can say result.add our, our sum that we computed divided by this size, because the size tells us how many nodes we had, right? So sum divided by size. And then we just return our result. So let's just make sure this code works. Oh, this needs to be a, a double because we're returning a list of doubles, right? So let's submit that again. And there we go. So next I'll jump into the time and space complexity. The time complexity of our solution is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of nodes that we have in our tree. Since we're doing a BFS, we have to touch every node a single time. And then our space complexity is also big O of n. Our Q size in the worst case will have to hold all n nodes. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if there's any other types of problems you want me to do. I'm open to doing any one of them, whether it be graph, trees, arrays, strings. I don't really care. So just let me know in the comments and I'll try to get to them. Laters.